I just created my own executive assistant using an AI agent, and it was surprisingly easy to do, and it's surprisingly useful. Here's everything my EA does for me. It looks at all cold sales emails, and it automatically replies to them and archives them for me. It forwards all my receipts and invoices to my finance provider. It uploads invoices from service providers like our lawyers to Google Drive. It helps me prepare our investor updates. It reminds guests for my upcoming meetings to RSVP. It automatically sends emails to reschedule meetings when I can't make it on short notice. It sends me Slack notifications for all of my external meetings that include really nice preparation materials. And it helps summarize the team meeting and share the results with the team. And these are just the eight workflows I've built so far, but I have a bunch more ideas. So let me dive in and show you how to do each one by one. For this AI agent, we will be using Relay.app. If you don't have a Relay.app account yet, you can sign up for one for free using the link in the description below. Now, the interesting thing about this AI agent is that not every single workflow uses AI, but when you take the package of things it does for me all together, it's really cool and replaces a lot of the things a real EA would do. First, I get a lot of cold sales emails, and it turns out that when you get a cold sales email, just deleting it doesn't do any good because you're still in the person sequence and you're just gonna get more and more and more emails from them. So for this workflow, I use a label added trigger. I manually go through my inbox at the beginning of every day and boom, 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 label all the cold emails. Once an email has been labeled as a cold email, I have an automation to automatically reply, no thanks, but check out our product, and then an automation to archive it. And so this takes a lot of the pain out of dealing with cold emails. The second workflow is also a really simple one, forwarding receipts and invoices automatically to our finance provider, which is Ramp. In this case, whenever I receive an email that contains invoice or receipt and doesn't contain a couple of keywords that I don't want to forward, I automatically forward the email to receipts at ramp.com. The third workflow, yet another simple one, when I receive emails from our lawyers, Gunderson Detmer, using this trigger uh, that contains the right sender, I automatically upload the invoice attachment to this folder in my Google Drive. Now let's get into the more interesting workflows. The next one is our investor updates workflow, and this is a multi-step workflow. So this runs uh, four days before the end of the month. The first thing it does is creates a copy of our investor update template, and it updates the date to send and the number of the investor update. It then shares the document with Tice on our team who helps me prepare the investor update. It sends a message automatically to Tice, asking him to fill in his sections of the update. It then assigns a human loop task to me to fill in my section of the update and finally to send the update. So again, there's no AI at all in this workflow, but it's a really helpful automated workflow that makes sure Tyson and I both do our parts and get the investor update out on time. Now let's get into the workflows that actually use AI in a meaningful way. So this is a cool one that reminds guests to RSVP for meetings if they haven't RSVP yet. So the way this works is it triggers four hours before the meeting if there are external guests and I'm the organizer. Then we have an AI step that looks at the guest list and tries to figure out, do we need someone to RSVP who hasn't RSVP'd yet? And if so, we draft a nice nudge email to send to them. So here's how I wrote this prompt. First, look through the guest list and output the name and email address of each guest that it's either not RSVP'd or RSVP'd no. And then also write a polite reminder email to all the guests that haven't replied yet to, to check in and see if they can make it. And this is gonna give us a list of guests that, uh, that have responded no or not responded at all. If that list is empty, no need to do anything because it means everyone has RSVP yes. If that list is not empty, it means we need to send an email. And so we can send an email to uh, all of the guests that haven't RSVP'd yet, which we take from the AI step, and we can include the email draft. And because this is a somewhat high stakes interaction, I have a human in the loop approval before this email gets sent out. And in the approval, I remind myself, this is the event, the title, the start time, here are all the guests, and here's the email draft I wanna to send to them. And so when I receive that approval notification in Slack, I can either say, yes, send that email exactly as you've written it, or no, I'm gonna come in and modify it before you send it, or maybe I don't need to send it at all because I know some context about why the person hasn't RSVP yet. The next one is another one that I don't use that often, but when I do, it's really helpful. Sometimes I'm on the go, or for whatever reason, I can't make a meeting. And when I find out about that, I wanna write a, 
an apologetic and polite email to the other people I'll be meeting with, asking them to find a new time. And it's actually quite a hassle to do this on, on mobile. So here I have a workflow that when the guests of a meeting changes, meaning an RSVP status changes, including my own, I then have an AI step that's gonna check whether a meeting needs to be rescheduled and drafts a polite reply. So in this case, it's a little bit trickier. So I use Claude 3.5 Sonnet and I say, you're an executive assistant that helps me, Jacob Bank, manage my calendar. When I can't attend a meeting, I'd like to send a polite email to all guests saying that I can't make it and asking them if any other times would work for them. Please review the following guest list, which includes names, emails, and RSVP statuses. And then I include the guest list from the event <clears throat> and output two things. One, a yes or no decision of whether this meeting needs to be rescheduled. And two, a draft of an email to send to everyone. And again, if uh, no actions needed, we do nothing. And if the meeting needs to be re rescheduled, we plug that email draft into a Gmail send email step and I approve it before it goes out. Okay, second to last workflow, help me prepare for my meetings. And I did a whole separate video on this if you wanna go into it in more detail. But in short, every time I have an event with external guests upcoming, which I've configured in my trigger here, I automatically search LinkedIn <clears throat> for all of the profiles of those guests. I use perplexity to research the external guests, and then I write myself a nicely formatted message in Slack. And I'll link to that, uh, that more detailed video that goes through setting up that workflow. Last but not least, we get team summaries every day from Fireflies, and I wanna send them out in Slack to the rest of my team. And so every time a Fireflies transcript is created, I prompt Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Again, I think it does the best job on this kind of task to write a great meeting summary, use emojis and bullet points to make it more readable, and then sends it out to our stand-up channel. So that's my EA so far. It does eight different things. Some use AI, some don't use AI. Some are very simple and straightforward, like uploading attachments to Drive. Some are a bit more complex, like deciding whether a meeting needs to be rescheduled and writing the right email about it. But it was actually really easy to set each of these up individually. And my guess is that I'm gonna keep adding to it over time, get to 10, 15, 20, and maybe even more workflows over time. So if you wanna take your first baby steps into creating an AI agent, this sort of personal assistant or executive assistant use case is a great place to start. So feel free to follow along with the workflows I've created here, or check out our community where we have a bunch more ideas of workflows that you can create.